Name and title first, please. Scott Irwin, Professor of Agricultural and Consumer Economics, University of Illinois. You and Daryl Good went back and said, let's find, and I don't know why you came up with six, but uh, the six, and maybe it was because they were all in the same range. Uh, let's, let's take a look over the last, uh, since 1960, uh, years, and see what the largest deviation from trend yield, which is different than the highest yields. But That's the, right. The largest deviation from trend yield up above mm -hmm. uh, the trend might be. You found six years that you thought you could work with and wanted to know how they compared, at least at this point in time, uh, as it relates to weather and crop condition to 2014. What did you find? Well, we went back and we wanted to look for basically uh, comparable years where there were very good uh, apparent growing conditions that would generate those uh, what I call super high yield years. And so uh, we thought that five was a reasonable target and there was a little difference depending on whether you define those deviations in bushel or percentage terms. So that's how we ended up with the six years that we did. And uh, we identified those six years, and on average, they were about 14 bushels above the trend at that point in time. Uh, the years that uh, ended up uh, being selected were 1972, 79, 82, 94, uh, 04, and 09. I thought 72 was an interesting year, simply because it had the largest percentage deviation but that was a long time ago. What was it about 72 when you looked at the numbers? Was there anything distinct about that year? Uh, I th nothing that was sh sharply different than the other five years that we selected. What was really remarkable is when you look at the data is how consistent the patterns are in terms of summer weather. In what form? Uh, Basically, you get precipitation uh, on a state average basis. Of course, there's wide variation within a state, but on a state average basis, and we looked at Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa to, be, to represent the Corn Belt. And precipitation in June, July, and August uh, in those six really high yielding years, uh, with just one or two exceptions, was right in what we would think of as the optimal range for precipitation. So we can think of what would be the best possible summer you could think of for growing corn. Basically, it's an inch of rain a week. And that's pretty much what happened approximately in those six years. And so you got just the right amount of precipitation. And then you had uh, considerably cooler than average summers, particularly in July and August, July being the uh, uh, silking and reproductive period, uh, but also very importantly, it was cool in August, which meant that uh, you were lengthening out the grain filling period. Was there much of a difference in how far along the crop might have been in any of those years at different times? So what stage it was in, when it was planted, when it silked? You know, that was that surprised us. We took a look at that, Todd, and uh, you can find years like 2009, which was uh, near record late planting in Illinois, yet we still had uh, record high yields that year. And so you saw anything from uh, very late to very early, that uh, it was more dependent on what actually happened in those key three summer months. Okay, so cooler than normal temperatures, which we have, um, an inch of rain a week, we'll see how that goes for mm -hmm. the rest of the season. Um, but I did read that normal to slightly above normal precipitation through the time frame. Right. Uh, that's the one point where this year, 2014, seems to deviate from those six years because there is a large part of the Midwest, uh, in Iowa, Minnesota in particular, parts of Illinois across uh, the upper northern part of the state and in Indiana in the northern part, which have had more rainfall than usual. Exactly, and, and not just a bit more than normal, uh, truly extreme amounts. The statewide average precipitation in June for Iowa 
again, it's a preliminary estimate at this point, was 9.3 inches. And uh, the range that's optimal would be four to four and a half inches. So they got over twice the normal precipitation. Uh, and that similar levels were experienced in uh, eastern Nebraska and through much of the corn and soybean growing region of Minnesota and some of Wisconsin. So it, it was, and even crept into some areas of Northern Illinois. To clarify for Iowa, not only did they get twice the optimal, but it was actually twice the normal as well. And so both, yes. in both cases, it was well outside of the range, which would have produced or has produced um, deviations to the, on the trend yield that were the largest on record in history. Uh, so when you put all of this into place, what does it tell you about the coming corn crop? For instance, where do we stand on trend yield today? What would the 14 bushel added to that mean? And what do you think it means because we have an outside of the normal precipitation way above uh, the optimum and the average? Right. Uh, we compute that if you just take the 14 bushel deviation in those six previous years added on to the trend, unconditional trend that we compute, which is about 159.5, you get a 173.6 US average yield. So that's, if you got the weather that was uh, closely following the pattern in those pre other six uh, high yielding years, that's what you would expect. But the weather so far, uh, as we just discussed, has not followed the script precisely in all areas. And then that's the key uh, uh, that you see when you look at the weather in these six years. It's just kind of remarkable how good it is everywhere. And that's what it takes to kind of have those perfect growing seasons. And what we don't know, what we do know is that in the last five decades, we've never had one of those super high yielding US average yields when you had such extreme precipitation in June. Now, that doesn't mean it can't happen, but it would be unprecedented. And it doesn't matter which of the three I states is out of the norm. Is that what I gathered from the information? That's right. You, but particularly, Iowa and Illinois are always key bellwethers uh, for the U.S. national average corn yield. And undoubtedly, uh, Illinois looks great. And the cool weather that we have been experiencing in July looks like we will for at least the next couple uh, weeks. Everything, you know, is coming up aces for, for Illinois so far. And there's certainly obviously areas in Iowa where that's true as well. Um, but uh, agronomists, you know, point out that under such extreme precipitation conditions, there could be questions about root development in, in the crops, denitrification for corn, uh, and those may not really be fully apparent until much later uh, in the season. One final question. You gave an average national trend yield that is lower than the USDA yield. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that? That's right. We did a really simple, uh, just a, a linear trend line from 1960 through 2013, and that's the number that, that comes up. Um, uh, my own personal estimate, if you ask me what I really think the trend is, uh, is probably uh, closer to 163 to 163 and a half. And that, that's a result of technical details of how you estimate trend. Uh, you can get slightly different answers if you use a full crop weather model as compared to just a simple linear trend. It also depends on the sample period that you use to estimate your trend. Uh, so. Uh, my own estimate of trend would be higher than the number we used in this article, uh, but lower than the USDA. But I would also want to add, whatever trend method you use wouldn't have much effect on the results in our uh, uh, analysis that we're talking about, because as long as you're using a consistent method, the, the same years will pop up. And the bottom line results are? that uh, the weather in June was a wild card for the uh, corn yield in the, in the Western Corn Belt. Uh, I would say it's not a foregone conclusion at this point that we'll have a, a low to mid 170s US average 
uh, yield. Uh, there, there are some real question marks about uh, whether in key uh, growing areas, so we'll have to see. Thanks so much. My pleasure.